How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this episode of Scantober, we're going to be talking about how to convert a surface into a solid body using Mesh Mixer. If you're already familiar with surface models, you'll want to skip ahead to the point of the video where we convert a surface into a solid, and you can find that in the bar below. If you're going to 3D print a model, you need what's called a watertight mesh. And a watertight mesh means an object that's completely solid that if you were to submerge it, no water would leak in. An example is printing out this geometric shape completely solid. You'll see it's been modeled as one solid piece, and when I bring it into the slicing software, it slices as you'd expect it to into a series of layers. Now, what happens if we take that same piece and go through and delete some of the faces at random? Now we have a model that doesn't really have a solid body, it's an infinitely thin surface that's missing some core pieces. So instead, we have sort of a partially unwrapped surface. If we take this file and bring it into our 3D printing program, it behaves erratically. The printing program isn't able to determine what's solid and what's surface. This happens pretty frequently in 3D scanning. Anytime that we scan something and we don't have a full 360 view of an object, we only wind up with a partial surface. So for this video, what I did was took a scan of this Halloween shield that I got at the dollar store. It's a perfect size, shape, it's pretty thin, but it's also got a lot of detail and texture, and you can see it's got some embossed features, which make it perfect for 3D printing. It's a good object to replicate. And we're gonna use that surface model to make this. This is a 3D printed version of that same shield, and you can see we captured a lot of that detail, even though it's just a surface. We converted that surface into a solid body that we're able to 3D print, and we made this. What we're looking at here is the finished mesh with the texture applied to it in Metashape. And what we're gonna do is take a step back and look at how we got to this point from a series of pictures. Metashape's a pretty powerful program, but it's also a little bit more complex than a lot of other photogrammetry solutions. So what we're doing here is we're going through and we're taking our initial array of pictures. And we're stitching those together to create a sparse point cloud. And this cloud is used to create tie points that are basically bundling all of those pictures together into one cohesive scan. From there, we create a dense point cloud, and this is where we have colored vertices. So this might look like a 3D model, but it's actually just a bunch of little tiny colored dots. This is pretty useful, but it's still not a triangulated mesh, so we can't interpret this into a surface very easily. So the next step, once we get to this point, is to create a triangulated mesh. And that's what we can bring into any kind of STL editing program like Mesh Mixer, or even Prusa Slicer just to directly print. You'll notice in the scan we did capture a lot of detail on the mesh, in addition to all of the texture, and if we zoom out a little bit, we also captured part of my back door, so that was in the mesh as well, so that showed up. So we don't really need all that. We're gonna trim that away later in Mesh Mixer. But for right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import this entire piece into Mesh Mixer and we're just gonna edit it as a whole. You can do this pretty easily in Metashape as you can see here, but I'm still playing around with the software and learning a little bit. So I decided to just bring the entire thing into Mesh Mixer. So from here, we can go back and take a look at our original sparse cloud, dense cloud, and then our solid mesh. And we can strip away that texture and look at just the solid mesh. And this is gonna show us what that triangulated mesh actually looks like. So if we 3D print it, this is what we're going to get. And it captured a lot of detail. The dragon looks really good. A lot of the studs look uh, visible. And there's that same sort of flame texture on the sides that appears in the actual shield. So I'm really happy with this. And from here, really the next step is just to take that mesh, bring it into Mesh Mixer, and then do some trim operations before printing. So here's our model in Mesh Mixer, and you can see just from rotating around, the mesh looks really good. And there's a texture applied to it right now, but we know the underlying geometry is pretty sharp. So the first thing we want to do is trim away the shield from the background. Now you can do this step in Metashape, I just happened to skip it, and so I'm going to go back and do that here. So here we're going to use the trim command to delete any geometry that's not applied to the shield. And the quickest way to do that is to select big chunks at first, and then we're gonna work our way down until we're progressively trimming down just the shield. The first step of the process is to get rid of all the background. That part's pretty straightforward. We can just make some large selection sets and delete those. The next step is a lot more time consuming. Once we've deleted a lot of the chunks off of the shield, we get down to a point where we just have some of the surrounding areas. And we wanna be really careful at this point because we don't wanna delete any of the geometry of the shield itself. So take your time and delete this geometry very slowly because the better your surface, the better your 3D model is going to be. 
one of the things we can do here is use the selection tool and use the smooth boundary option, which will give us a nice clean line. Instead of following the triangles, it'll optimize for a relatively straight line. That's a very quick way to get to a better looking surface than having a bunch of triangular edges. Once we've finished trimming away the edges, we're left with a nice, clean, even surface. One of the things we want to look for are any triangles or any other geometry that's sticking down at a little bit of an angle that might be a problem later when we go to extrude. Right now, what we really want is a nice, clean, even surface that looks like a very, very thin model. We don't want to have any large pieces of geometry on the edges, so what we're looking at here, where it's completely flat all around the sides, this looks pretty good, and I'm comfortable taking this to the next step. To complete the transition from surface to solid model, we're going to use the extrude command in Mesh Mixer to bring down the base to a negative value. This will give us a large amount of material to cut away from that we can use to create a flat plane on the back of the model. Once we've found a nice flat plane, you can go and see that the bottom of the model has been cut flat, but we still want a curved profile. So what I'm doing here is bringing in a cylinder, and I'm trying to roughly approximate that profile of the shield, and I'm going to orient the cylinder until it looks like a good approximation of that profile. When that's ready, I can boolean the two together and subtract out any difference. And this leaves us with our finished model. Now that we've done the boolean operation, we can go around the bottom and see that it's got a curved profile, as well as all the original detail on the front of the shield. This model is now ideal for 3D printing, as it's a thin, consistent profile with detail only on one side, and we can orient it upright to capture as much of that detail as possible. Once the model's been brought into Prusa Slicer, we're going to orient it upright so it prints out with as much detail as possible. We're also going to split it right in the middle, and you'll note in my cut option I have rotate lower part upwards, and what that's going to do is allow both parts to print with a nice flat base while also printing upright and capturing as much detail as possible. For this print, I'm going to have both parts print out at the same time, and I'm going to print these out on my ANET ET5X 3D printer. The ANET ET5X is a large volume 3D printer with a print size of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, so this shield will be able to make a little bit larger than the original that we scanned. This will be a good comparison to see how much detail was actually captured. Once the parts have both been oriented on the build platform, it's time to go ahead and save that to an SD card and hit print. Both halves printed out great, and because the build volume of the ANET ET5X is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, I was able to print the shield a little bit larger than the original scale. This is nice because it helps enlarge some of the detail, and when we look at the texture, we can compare it directly to the original. Once I put the two halves together, you can see it looks really good, it's a pretty solid fit, and also the dragon and a lot of the rivets and the detail that was built into the shield, it came across really well, so it looks pretty good for a direct copy. So now you know how to take a surface and then convert it into a solid body for 3D printing. This is a really powerful tool, and it enables you to take a 3D scan and convert it into a model that can be 3D printed. I'm really happy with how this came out, and overall, I think it captured a pretty good amount of detail. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about 3D scanning, you can check out my Scantober playlist to see the rest of my 3D scanning videos. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun scanning!